Home Sports Entertainment presents Dallas Sidekicks Indoor Soccer. play host to the defending league champion San Diego Sockers. Hello everyone, it's really nice to have you here tonight at Reunion Arena. I'm Norm Hitzkiss alongside former Dallas Tornado player and coach Mike Renshaw. We have got a dandy indoor soccer game for you. If you've not seen the sport, it is high paced, it is furious, it is high scoring. It is a dynamite game to watch and we've got a dynamite team for you. The San Diego Soccers are a terrific soccer team. They have won a championship of the North American Soccer League, or MISL, each of the last four years. They've got the all-time leading scorer in this league. They've got the two all-time leading goaltenders in this league. Michael, if the sidekicks are going to judge themselves on how much they've improved this year, this is a good team to try it against because the Soccers are the yardstick of excellence in this league. Well, this is the team to try it against. I mean, uh, they've done it all. Uh, this is definitely the team to beat. Uh, the way they took Baltimore apart in the playoffs last year in Baltimore, 14-2, to is just unbelievable. When this team is on, forget it. Realize this team in the last four years has played 34 playoff games. That's the highest caliber possible opposition. They're 30 and four in the playoffs in the last four years. Steve Jungle, in baseball it's Babe Ruth. In football it may well be Walter Payton, any one of these days. In indoor soccer it's Steve Zungle. Steve Zungle and has been Steve Zungle for the last seven years. Uh, this guy has led this league uh, in scoring five of those seven years, has been MVP in the league five of seven years. For good measure, got 10 goals in four games against the sidekicks last year. Uh, he's just about unstoppable. And you must remember that game in, game out, he plays against the other team's supposed best defender. This game will also see a terrific score on the other side of the field for Dallas. Tattoo is a goal scorer in a league with Zungle. No doubt about it. He is definitely in Zungle's league. He's not had quite the supporting cast that Zungle has had in the past, but Tattoo is a threat that's scored every time he touches the ball. Last year, San Diego tattooed Dallas four times. The combined score of those games, 34 to 18. But San Diego had best not come in here thinking they're going to kick this club around. It's a much improved Dallas team. This is a very much improved Dallas team. They're two and three on the year, but they could real easily be five and zero. Oh. They've beat themselves in a couple of games, but they're not making the sort of mistakes on a consistent basis that they made last year that really hurt them. Their game against Tacoma uh, last week was an excellent game. They won five to two and really played well throughout the 60 minutes. This must be an especially poignant night for you. The coach of the Sockers is Ron Newman. You and Ron came to America in the late 60s, same year. He was your coach for just about your entire pro career. And the year you left because of a knee injury, he was fired. That's right. I think he was fired because I had the knee injury. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it is. It's great to see Ron back. And, uh, and the longevity of this guy is just phenomenal. But he always was a good coach. Always was a coach who got on well with his players. I never had any trouble personally with Ron. Always thoroughly enjoyed playing for him. And, uh, you know, I wish him nothing but success. But uh, hopefully uh, not tonight. You know, he's had six championships, Mike. He's going to run out of fingers for his rings soon. Well, that's right. We were joking with him earlier about all these rings he's got on his fingers. I just don't know what he's going to do with them all. For those of you who have not seen indoor soccer before, a couple of notes about the rules of the game. It is played in four 15-minute quarters. The teams change directions every quarter. To score, the ball must go totally over the goal line. The ball remains in play in this game as long as it remains in the field. And Michael, it has aspects much like hockey in that you can be penalized in this game and play shorthanded. That's right. This game is not as blindingly fast as ice hockey is, but uh, it is very similar in a lot of areas. Uh, if you commit a bad foul, uh, we'll go through that a bit uh, later, um, you will get sent into the penalty box for two minutes. Your team must then play a man short for two minutes. So we have power play situations, penalty killing situations. Also, if your team commits six uh, fouls by any member of the team in any one period, then that, that also warrants a two-minute penalty. Here is San Diego on the attack. Down the right wing, that's Fernando Clavijo. Clavijo has it taken away by the sidekicks, and they start up the wing. Here is Tattoo. In 100 games indoors in his life, 146 goals. We have, in MISL history, 
three of the four highest goals per game player in the history of this sport in Zungle and Sagoda for San Diego and Tattoo for Dallas. Zungle in an average game in his career. That Sungle with the ball right there, number seven, has scored 2.2 goals every game in his career. There's a shot deflected toward the goal and over the top of the goal by Perry Vandebeck. And almost right up here where Mike Renshaw could have played it. We are a minute and two seconds deep here at Reunion Arena. You're watching live indoor soccer. The person handling the ball right now is Zoli the goalie, Zoltan Toth. Here are your officials. You've had a word or two with Gino DiPolito. Well, for my money, Gino is the best referee in this league, and uh, it's, it, it's not saying a lot, really, because some of the referees are, are quite frankly, uh, below par. But Gino is certainly the best. And you put Torres Cabritchen in that league, too, as a pretty good official. Torres also, that's right. The ball deep in the end for the San Diego Soccers. That is 80 Coker. Coker, free in the corner, knocks it out. It is played to the goalie. New rule this year. If you play it to your own goalie, your own goalie cannot distribute back and then take the ball back. He must play it with his feet when he takes it back. He uses the right to play it with his hands. Here comes Dallas on the attack. And as Billy Kasky and a nice save by Zoltan Toth on the dive, it's knocked over the glass. Now, the rule on the ball over the glass. The team to touch it last. The other team gets possession of the ball at the kick-in line. That's right, this dangerous situation. McLeod right across the middle, it sold through Toth, but off the boards. Wow, an excellent opportunity for Kasky, and Toth got a part of the shot and deflected it. Psychic's a little unfortunate not to score there. Uh, with a set play situation like that, it, it does provide the chances for goals, and, and we saw one just there. If this game works like other San Diego Dallas games, it will be very, very low scoring. This year, in five games, the sidekicks and their opponents have scored but 14 goals in the first half. Here's the steal with Dallas, the steal made by Evans. Gives it over on the wing to Nanchoff, back to Evans. And they will come back to the fence to set it up. And Dallas now will keep possession of the ball while they change on the, go on the go. One of the reasons they're changing here is to make sure to get Lawson, who has the ball, on the floor at the same time Zunga was on the floor for San Diego. That's right. And the other thing that I noticed earlier was that Collier was the one who started to mark Tattoo, um, which was kind of a surprise. The ball batted around and almost a major mistake in their own end by the Sockers, but Schmetzer knocked it out of there. There's a long ball on the wing. Now coming out of his penalty area, the goalie for Dallas, Sobieski, must play it with his feet. But now Sobieski brings it back and it is fouled by Zungo, and Dallas will continue. Another foul on San Diego. Right, and as Tattoo now has come on the field, and Crow went out, and Collier is back on. So Collier, it looks like he's going to stay with Tattoo, although now he leaves him. And Clavijo comes over, Fernando Clavijo, a 1983-84 NASL indoor all-star at defense. This is Zungle, number seven. Zungle marked by Lawson, and Lawson gets up from Vanderbeck. And we now have a whistle. It's foul against Lawson. Steve Zungle's been the MVP of everything in any place he's ever played this game. Playoffs, regular season, you name it, Zungle is it. Steal by the sidekicks. Tattoo, one-on-one, -on -one. this is Clavijo marking. Tattoo goes to his right, plays to the wing back, cut off by Clavijo, nice play. This is dangerous here, this guy's very good one-on-one -on -one player with the ball. On Zagoda. any other club in the league, Zagoda would be considered the superstar, and Zagoda gets run down, but the rule is that the defender made the touch of the ball first, the left-hand shot blocked by Sobieski, Zagoda knocks it in. What a shot from that angle. Any other team in the North American Soccer League, Franco Zagoda would be their superstar. On this club, he is the second star. Here is Zagoda just staying in front like the vulture. Sobieski dives, now watch Zagoda right between the legs and in the goal. I mean, from what an angle as well. Great goal. That guy's probably the quickest player out on the court tonight. He is very, very quick. Zagoda in his MISL career now. Are you ready for some stats, Michael? That's his 186th goal in 137 games. Zagoda was the third leading scorer in the league last year on a team that had the leading scorer, Zungle. He's certainly a very, very good player. Still a young player, too. Dallas in their own end. Press 
Fisher giving up. In the corner, turning on the ball is A.D. Coker. Coker out in front. They try to play it back through the Coker. It's intercepted by Evans. The Psychics need to play a little better defensively if they're going to have a chance in this game. Again, Dallas using the possession of the ball as an opportunity to change sides. And the ball basically just given up into the far end. You will see plays. Oh, what a play by Coker. Around him he comes. Here's Quinn for Coker out to get it. So yes. You will see Dallas occasionally look a bit out of sync because many of these people have just been playing with their teammates for perhaps three, four weeks in their careers. That's right. We, we said earlier, this San Diego is the yardstick by which everybody else is measured in this league. Nanchoff shot blocked in traffic in front, and it goes far, far back into the defense where Victor Moreland, who's off to a terrific start, gives it to McLeod. McLeod crosses, turns. This is the second line for Dallas. McLeod shot blocked in defense by Crow, who led this league in block shots last year and is leading it this year. Quinn goes down. The tackle by Lawson. Quinn, 14. It's his first game of the season. He has been out the first four San Diego games with a sprained knee. Zungle runs into Moreland, no call. Well, Mor Moreland is probably one of the most physical players in the league, certainly one of the toughest players in the league, and uh, he was quite unceremonious the way he dumped Zungle in. The San Diego Soccer's come in three wins and one loss, tied for the lead in the MISL West with Minnesota. And Dallas is two and three in fifth place in the East. San Diego on a three-game win streak. They won their, they lost their first game 3-2 in overtime at Baltimore and have won their last three, 8-6 at Cleveland, 3-2 at home against LA and Chicago. Here is Ugo Perez. Perez turns his shot. Ooh, got away with one there. There really was no defense for Sobieski. That's right, the sidekicks uh, have been left one against one on a couple of occasions at the back there, and that is absolutely no good at all against a team of San Diego's offensive ability. The problem when you play San Diego is they can come at you from so many places. If you stop Zungle, Zagoda gets you. If you stop them both, who knows what Perez might get you. Dallas very fortunate. Two true stars of this team, multi-time All-Stars Julie V and Gene Woolrich are not playing tonight. V is sitting out with a pulled abdominal muscle, and Wilrich is sitting out a one-game suspension. There's the shot across in front of the Dallas net again, and San Diego is getting far too many chances. That's right, Sarkis is a little nervous, a bit overawed by the situation so far. But again, if you can fight off this stretch of play, no game is dominated by one team for 60 minutes. The opportunities to score will come against San Diego. Oh, that's right. That's Jacques Laducieux. Two-minute penalty. The Kings Devons, I believe, for boarding. Kind of a delayed call. 17 Dallas, two minutes. 17 Dallas, you're exactly right, Michael. Gino DiPolito is going to send Mark Evans to the box. Now, we're going to get to see one of the truly high-octane offenses in this league go on the offensive. Dallas must sit out Evans for the next two minutes. And the one-man advantage will belong to San Diego for that two minutes. This telecast is authorized on the rights granted to home sports entertainment and is intended solely for the non-commercial entertainment of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of home sports entertainment is prohibited. Announcers for this telecast were selected and are employed by Home Sports Entertainment. Good going, Michael, all the way through. <laughs> Private joke, <laughs> fans. For your Eastern standings, Dallas has switched sides this year. They are in the East, where you see Minnesota and Baltimore, an excellent team in second. Very, very tough division. I mean, Baltimore in the championship game last year, Cleveland very strong all the time. Chicago at 0-4, one of the best teams in the league last year. You must finish fourth to make the playoffs. Top four in each division make the 18 playoffs at the end of the year. Here you see San Diego and Kansas City. Uh, that division is not quite as strong, I wouldn't think, on paper. St. Louis is slipping a little. They were a strong team for a couple of years. Tacoma's a very good team. Wichita are also in there. Now let's review what San Diego plays what they call a super power play occasionally. Their goaltender, Zolan, Zoltan Toth, 
will come up all the way to his red line. In fact, all the way into Dallas territory occasionally to play the ball. You see it right now. That's the goaltender for the Sockers playing the ball. Which effectively, instead of it being a five against four, makes it a six against four. And yes, indeed, he is staying relatively uh, far upfield there. Toth is just back about midfield, and they're literally playing six on four. Zungel is the distributor, number seven. Zungel with the ball right now. Straight out, looks, give it back to the wing. Wide open shot available, blocked from the Dallas defense. That is Kazimir Dana, a Polish all-star, 38 years old, probably the finest player Poland ever produced. There's Dana again, blocked by Chris Sobieski. There's Dana again, blocked from the defense. Now Dallas converts to offense, intercepted by Zungel. Trouble here. Can Dallas get organized in time? That's the key. They they do in time, and it's Zungel to the left foot to the boards. Kofler's shot hits the post and comes out. Dallas dodges one there. Dana Zagoda turns left foot, blocked in the defense. Goodness, it's like a dartboard in front of the Dallas net. Psychic's a little fortunate right here. Yeah, Dana's now the distributor. Real scrambling defense here by the sidekicks. Nice play in the Dallas defense. That'll buy him some time. Turning, turning, turning. Knocked down is Jim Gabata and intercepted. Here comes Perez. The Dallas defense a bit disorganized. Zagoda goes to the right foot, winds up blocked by Redwanski. Up and in and over the top of the net. That'll be a kick in for San Diego. Only 41 seconds remain in the Dallas penalty. On that last chance there, when Gabara first got the ball, immediately he crossed the first red line. A more experienced player would have had a shot because Toth was still well out of his goal and he could have chipped the ball over Toth into the goal, but he wasn't quite uh, on top of the situation. The play right in front, knocked up and over the net by Zungo. Is off it off of Dallas? Off Juremovic, yes. Yeah, Juremovic just that. got a touch on it. Again, dangerous situations at the best of time, corner kicks, and when you've got a man advantage, uh, particularly dangerous, because obviously you can't cover everybody out there. Look at the stars they're putting on the field. Zungle, the MVP. Sagoda, the third best scorer in the league. Dana, one of the finest players, and there's a shot by Sagoda. What a save by Sobieski. Absolute save. highlight film save. Great save by Sobieski. Perez goes to the left foot, drives it in front. Redwanski up over the glass, and it leaves but 29 seconds in the Dallas penalty. If Dallas is fortunate enough to kill this one, they will have truly done a marvelous job hanging in. Michael, look at this save. Got over there quickly. Sure did. Came over from the short side. Got over there. Back to Dana. 25 seconds left in the power play. See Zungo. So go to Zungo. They switch places. Zungo having a little trouble handling it. The Dallas pressure comes out. And this penalty is nearly over. Ten seconds left. This is their last chance here. They'll work for one chance. So go to the Zungo. Seven seconds. There's the chance. Dana winds. And Sobieski parries it over the top. Three seconds remaining. And you will see now, here comes some regular-looking units out. Coker comes off. Redwanski off. Dallas getting a lineup back on the field that Evans can play with when he leaves the penalty box. Uh, but still, still a very dangerous situation because you are still uh, a man down and it is a corner kick again. The Sockers leave their number one line out there, Zungel and Zagoda. They come on with a defenseman, though, Schmitzer. Sidekicks are taking a chance here with this lineup on this corner kick. Yes, they are, because it is not their penalty-killing lineup. Zungle across in front. It is not deflected, and here comes Evans out of the box right now. Both well, sidekicks have got to feel fortunate to get out of that without conceding a goal and going 2-0 down. They have now killed a penalty for the ninth time out of 13 opportunities this year. Zungle marked by Lawson. Boy, your heart just goes in your throat every time Zungle touches the ball because he's capable at any given moment against Lawson again. That is Dallas' third common foul of the period. Remember now, six, and you are assessed a two-minute penalty. Yes, both teams now with three fouls during the first period. And another one of those dangerous situations, this is the fifth or sixth corner kick for San Diego. Perez, point blank, gets in. Well, you've got to say it's been all San Diego so far. Yes, it has. You know what made this play? Schmitzer 
decoyed across the front of the goal, and the Dallas defender had no choice but to go with him. See, the defender goes with Schmitzer, leaving Perez only one man out there to block, and he does not block the shot. That's right. Evans was a bit late getting out to Perez. Might have deflected slightly off Evans as well. Really no chance for Sobieski. 2-0. And the one thing you don't want to do against a quality team like San Diego, Dallas has done. They have gotten down more than a goal early. Well, they can blow you away. They've done it with uh, several teams in the past. They are very capable of getting into double figures. And this is a dangerous team in that they have not been scoring a lot early this season. They got three goals their first game and third game, and only four goals their fourth game. And this is the highest powered offense in this league. At any given moment, I know you've heard that on NFL games, this club has, is, as Michael said, capable of putting 12 and 14 on the board. Very important now that Dallas reestablish some equilibrium. As you see, the scoring, Hugo Perez. Oh, and Sobieski tried to play the ball up the wing and knocked it over the glass and gave it back to the soccer. Perez gets his sixth goal of the season. The assist to Zungle, his fifth assist of the season. And the Sockers have forged a 2 nothing lead. Well, it seems like the whole game has been played down on the sidekick's end. Well, Zoltan Toth, oh, the shot is in. Oh, my goodness, and now Dallas really finds itself in trouble. What looked like a slight letdown, and Aiden Coker just towed the ball. Now, Coker gets lucky here. Michael, this is an example of if you hit it toward the goal, sometimes it'll go in. Well, that's right. He hits the first time shot as the ball's coming into him. Pulls the defender off. Ryan Quinn to Coker. Juganovic was a bit casual there with his challenge. You know, maybe, maybe he thought uh, the player was not going to shoot. Well, that's a dangerous thing to assume with this club. This club will shoot. There's no doubt about that. We're finding that out tonight. Coker is an example of the depth of this club, though, Michael. He's an extraordinary player and is nothing more on this team than a role player. That's right. He's certainly not one of their leading eyes, but he's very capable player. Live NBA action to look forward to on HSE. Dallas Fort Worth viewers will see. Tomorrow night, the Indiana Pacers, Wayne and Tisdale come to count. Friday, November 29th, the Sac King, Sacramento, makes its first Sacramento visit to the evening this year. Houston viewers will see the Rockets Tuesday against Golden State. And then Saturday, November 30th, against those same Sacramento teams. The Rockets live from the Summit and the Mavericks live from the Union Unit. Each game starts at 7.30. We're seated by 7 o'clock each evening for our entire audience with Sports Talk on HSC. Our guest tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, you can talk to Kansas City Royals championship baseball catcher Jim Sunberg, who's our guest on Sports Talk, to answer any of your questions. Right here, Dallas has found itself in an early large hole. Well, that's right. It's very difficult to give these guys a three-goal lead and uh, expect to beat them. Uh, the sidekicks just look a bit lethargic. That's two elbowed off the ball by Clavijo, and that is the fourth foul of San Diego. Clavijo tapped Tattoo. That's not where he's hurting, the back of the head. Vander back, knocked back to Toth. Long, long ball. Coker marked by Lawson. Lawson takes it away. The Dallas sidekicks have played 54 games in their year-plus history. Ooh. Toth has to go for it. And number four, Mike Yuremovic on the field now has played every one of them. The only man to play every one. Maybe Coker from Quinn. Everybody's getting in the act tonight for the soccer so far. Here's Gary Collier, who's just passed to Clavijo. What a year Collier had last year. That's Collier handling the ball. February 10th, he broke his right ankle. It healed. He got well. He made it back for the playoffs. He played eight games and... Broke his left ankle. Oh. The Sockers again. It's in front. Sobieski out the clock. You will see the two red lines on the field. That is a rule similar to hockey for offside. Michael, review the rule. Well, you cannot play the ball on the fly 
over the two red lines if they do, and it is an infraction and a free kick for the other team. So you can't kick it like from your end all the way over right into the net. You just can't do that. That's right. That's correct. It is a similar infraction then to hockey, the three line pass in hockey. Down goes Manchoff, pushed by Padez, and this will be foul number five of the quarter against San Diego. Any other common foul will result in their having an hand sent to the penalty box for two minutes. In fact, the thing that's interesting here is how difficult the sidekicks are having uh, to get the ball deep in uh, San Diego's end of the field. There is McLeod, you're very right, there haven't even been opportunities. To, to flex, nobody there to clean up except Perez, who trips over his own feet, and the shot goes wide by Lawson. But notice how cleverly San Diego plays the ball back to Toth in any kind of pressurized situation. There it is again. There's Collier. Dallas putting probably its best pressure of the game so far on San Diego over the last few seconds. Another interception, that's Louis Nanchoff. Wes McLeod. Nanchoff, with the ball right now, has scored a goal in four of the first five games for Dallas. It's scored a point every Change of tactics for Dallas, really. Uh, San Diego do, has the, do have the ball. They seem to be trying to put pressure on them a lot earlier. Well, Dallas, really, to get hit by another goal or two isn't going to bother Dallas right now. They must get some offensive and get back into this game. This is trouble again. Zongo, Zongo goes to the left foot, and Sobieski kicks in. The problem here is that so often when you get ahead, boy, is that a misleading graphic, huh? Sobieski's been peppered. That's right. The two, the, I can't remember the two saves by Toss. They must have been simple shots. I wonder if they're counting San Diego kickbacks. That'd be. The problem now for the goaltender standpoint for Dallas, Michael, is that you must take chances offensively. Often that strips the goalie of his defensive support and you're going to get two-on-one, three-on-two situations. Well, that's right. The sidekicks have got to, they're playing at home. They've got to come forward and attack, and that's going to leave themselves uh, definitely vulnerable at the back. Well, Sobieski and two defenders or one defender left at the back line must keep Dallas in the game while the sidekicks go on the offensive right now. Who's the person who can go on the offensive? That's for sure. That too. Evans, the left foot blocked in the defense again by Kovino. Oh, yeah. Ooh, better pass there, and Irenovich could have run onto that ball. And he does anyway, and it's right in front of the back end by Billy Kasky. Cyprus needed that one. Yes, but he needed that one. And really, it's not really a pass by Irenovich. He is actually hitting a shot. Uh, fortunately for the Cyprus, Kasky's in the right place at the right time. Again, the intent of Urimovich, and you covered it, is not to shoot on goal, but it's to shoot close enough to get Toth to come out and feel he must consider playing the ball. That's right, generally speaking, but I really think then that Urimovich was actually hitting a shot. I don't think he was purposely playing the boards. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say he was purposely playing the boards. This time we will. <laughs> Kasky gets the goal for Dallas. The assist to Mike Urimovich and for Billy Kasky, goal number two on the year for Uremovich, his third assist. And here comes Zagoda, and out to get it, Sobieski, it's free in front. Can the Sockers get a foot on it? No. A six foul, that's a two minute penalty against San Diego. This is a penalty signaled immediately without the sixth foul. Boy, Quinn really ran on to the right. ankle. You're right, Norm, but that, maybe that then doesn't count as the 16th foul. It's an automatic two minute penalty for tripping. Yeah. That is Diego Castro, and now San Diego is in deeper trouble. Well, they are. Now, if the sidekick can draw another foul here, San Diego will now have to play two men in the penalty box. Now we have an interesting situation, okay? As you see Quinn, the man in the penalty box. Dallas is the best in this league at scoring on man advantages. They've scored 10 of the 18 times. San Diego is the best in this league at not being scored on. They've had 16 penalties and allowed only one goal in those 16 opportunities the other team had the extra man. Which is absolutely a phenomenal number. Look out for one other thing San Diego does here. 
they will lay back defensively, but once they have possession of the ball, they will play a game with their bench. Someone will hop off into the near door, and Zungle will come out the far door and attempt to get a breakaway. That's right, and Zungle is by that far door already, and Moreland's aware of it because he's kind of keeping an eye on Zungle. Now they play back to Toth, and he distributes. This is kill time for San Diego, but they don't kill much of it. Nanchoff just gives the ball up. Ooh, G. Crow with a, a fairly stern <laughs> shot on goal. That's having an awful lot of respect for your goalie's ability with his feet. Oh, turns on that shot by Debrito and makes the save. Uh, see San Diego's pressure. I mean, they're pressuring really far out from their own goal in comparison to the way most teams uh, defend uh, when they're a man down. Both teams drop right back immediately inside the red line, and San Diego bleeds a few extra seconds off the clock with their ability to push forward. There's Tattoo, go to the right foot, blocked in the defense, hit loose in front, but there's Schmitzer. That's the end of the period. That is the end of the first period. When the second quarter starts, the Dallas sidekicks will still have 55 seconds left of their man advantage. But that score late in the period has narrowed San Diego's gap. After 15 minutes of play, live from Reunion Arena, the San Diego Soccer leads the Dallas sidekicks 3-1. After 15 minutes, the defending MISL champion San Diego Soccers have taken a two-goal lead on the Dallas Sidekicks. You know soccer is a, an international sport. It's probably more international at Reunion Arena tonight than you could ever imagine. There are 30 players active for tonight's game. 16 on Dallas and 14 on the Soccers. 18 countries are represented tonight, Michael. It's like the Olympic Games, though. That's outrageous. There are as many players active for tonight's game on the two ro rosters born in Yugoslavia as there are born in the USA. The only two contents, uh, continents not represented in tonight's game are Australia and Antarctica. And quite frankly, I've never seen a soccer game in which Antarctica is represented. Have you? No, I haven't. I've seen some Australians play and they're not bad at it. It's remarkable. It's remarkable the way the bloods blend in this international sport. There are some marvelous players that have come over here. This is the American version of the international sport, though, indoor soccer. It's a very good game, fast paced, a lot of action, a lot of bodies flying around. And there's the man who probably did as much to plant the seeds in Dallas as anybody has ever done. That's right, Ron, Ronald Victor Newman. What a career he's had. My goodness. 34 playoff record as a coach. All games, all games combined, Ron Newman has won 361 games as a coach in North America, lost 226, tied 57. Seems very relaxed on the bench in comparison to most of the coaches we see here now. If you had Bronco Zagoda, Steve Zungle, Julie V, Zoli Toth, Jim Gorsick, six championship rings, and a booming franchise, Nothing. you'd be positively laid out, Mike. Nothing to worry about. There's a shot of Quinn in the uh, penalty box still. 55 seconds remaining in his penalty. He seems fairly relaxed as well. He certainly does. For somebody in the sin bin. <laughs> Away. Second quarter at Reunion Arena Live. The Dallas sidekicks on the attack with the man advantage. Harry Vanderbeck, the man orchestrating. Manshoff turns to the right foot and will give it back to Vanderbeck. They go to the right. It's played around. Boy, Toth makes a wonderful arm deflection. Toth is a terrific goalie. He's the best in goals against in this league so far early this season. Far, look at this far. pressure again. Now look at them forcing Sobieski to just throw the ball out there, and this is taking up time. Just about kills it off. 
10 seconds left in the penalty. They'll kill it, kill it off now. Yes, they will. It's just fired up to the middle of the field. And Schmetzer now has an opportunity for San Diego to Zungle. Zungle bangs it off Gino DiPolito. The penalty's over, and the soccer's league leading. Whoops. So Bieski let the ball slip out of his hands in the penalty area and then picked it up again, which he can't do. If, if the ball comes out of his hands, then he must play it with his feet. Realize what, what Michael was explaining here. So Bieski had handled the ball, let the ball slip out, then try to pick it up again. That is a violation of the rules. And it's the sort of mistake you can't make against these guys. Dallas looks like it is played out of that disadvantage, though, as Lawson takes the ball from Crow, but he's still in traffic. And then Zungle takes it back. Down goes Zungle. I think it's a good call that there was no call, but I really don't think it was a foul. Dallas needing a goal to make this a one-goal game again. San Diego looking for insurance, leading by two. Early second period. You're live at Reunion Arena. Mike Renshaw is the analyst. I'm Norm Hitzkis. Happy to have you here for Major Indoor Soccer. So what San Diego is doing now, they're quite content to let the sidekicks play four against four at one end of the field and leave Zungle down here by himself to play one against one. Here is Crow, the MISL Defender of the Year last year. There are stars everywhere on this team. Well, they're very solid, top to bottom. Realize that sitting on the San Diego bench tonight, is the all-time MISL leader in winning percentage for a goalie sitting on the bench. <laughs> Here is the shot and a leaping deflection by Sobieski off that drive by Clavijo. They come from everywhere. That was a defender. That's right. He, he came from a very deep position from behind the play, if you will, let everything get in front of him and then came late into space. like a blowout 10 minutes ago. Some order has been restored. So what do I mean by them playing one against one down here with Zungle? And a semi-break, no. Perez cannot catch up to the ball, Nanchoff can. But again, every play like that gives cause for concern to the Dallas defense. They can't go headlong straight ahead because San Diego counterattacks so well. That's right. And he's loose. San Diego does a great job of pressuring him. The boards in front, back and around McLeod, and the Sockers pick it up. The Sockers have not had really one good shot from a direct in front of the goal position tonight. San Diego is keeping them out in the perimeter areas and out wide, uh, and trusting that uh, Zoltan Toth can take care of shots from there. And again, realize that the bigger angle toward the angles, toward the sidelines, toward the corners you're forced, the less of a goal you have to shoot at, and thus the other team has less of a goal to defend. Again, now, now notice what Mike's saying. Notice he's forced to the corner again. That's right. They're overplaying and forcing the ball toward the corner. Now here's a shot from straight out, it's wide. But he's straight out, and he's still a, it's a long way away straight out. Lawson, it's going, going, and gone from Reunion Arena. 25 feet out in this game is a long way out for a shot on goal. Especially with a relatively small goal, and these goalkeepers are very quick players. So he's shooting from a long way, really. The goalie had it covered all the way. I mean, I think San Diego will let him shoot from there. He'll take the chances from there. That shot was more than 25 feet. That was about 40 feet. Again, if you're a good goaltender, you don't mind ball shot from 40 or 45 feet. That's what you get paid for stopping. If you let a lot of those in, you wind up tending bar. I think someone needs to explain this rule to Tattoo. Tattoo cannot run into the penalty area while that ball's being played there on that goal kick. That's why they made them take the kick again. Because the first time, Tattoo did run in there. And we're back in the middle. He's got a win. Juranovic likes the boards, turns on it, likes the boards. Remember that. Knocked away from him. Boy, nice defensive play down there by 80 Coke. A gaggle of human beings, and it squirts out to Evans. Left puts it in. Again, though, it's, you know, 25, 30 feet out. His own tough will take those all day. It's no problem for him at all. Yeah, no. One 
more thing to notice about Zoltan Tope when he makes the save. Look how quickly he comes up and looks for the ball that he can throw to a forward. The whistle, tattoo in front, in front, in front, tries to play it around the goal, he hits it! It was a shirt. what a great effort. I mean, he bounced off three players. I mean, this guy's about five foot seven, he's as strong as an ox, he's like a mini refrigerator. On that play, he was like a human pinball. Tattoo just bouncing around in front of the penalty area. Oh, he rides the tackle there. Watch, rides another tackle. Jumps over an attempted trip by the goalie, and then wallops him with his left foot from a poor angle. Sultan Toth tried to grab his ankle and bring him down. He wanted to get a two-minute penalty. It took, well, he, he did, because he knew it was a goal if he didn't take him down. And Tattoo just jerked the right foot out of his grasp, continued on, a one-on-three goal by the fantastic Armadillo. Tattoo with, for him, this year, goal number six in game number six. Well played by Lawson there. Beat Zungle one-on-one. -on -one. Chance for Kasky. Must take him on. Got to take him on, yes. Doesn't have the pace. Nice match, though, with Clavijo. That's two yep. good players. Clavijo showed good quickness there. Now notice the attention Dallas is getting on their defensive end. Now, see how Dallas is starting to play forward more defensively, cutting off the passing lanes. A much more alert-looking team than the one that started this game. That's right. This is the sidekicks we expected to see at the start of the game. And they started off sluggishly, got themselves in a 3-0 hole. They've managed to climb out of it a little bit. No assist. The goal called quite righteously unassisted because... Well, it was unassisted. <laughs> it was marvelously played. It was a marvelous individual effort. And there's Lawson. Uh, tattoo from tattoo, it should have been. Oh, Nanchoff steps on that. Boy, you can really bust an ankle doing things like that. Zungle there's Zungle and Lawson, Zungle and Lawson again. Zungle. In front, turning on it is Quinn. And he just does not get a shot off. Well, it's one turn too many. He had the defenders totally in his mercy. You know, the defenders had to go and protect against the shot. Quinn made the move like he was going to shoot. Defenders tried to block the attempted shot, which never came. It, it looked as though Quinn wanted the perfect shot there, Mike, instead of flailing away. Well, he wanted the defenders to make fools of themselves, really. You know, to have them laying on the ground while he put it into the net. But, Some, uh, sometimes, would it be advisable when the other club is obviously in a helter-skelter defensive position just to throw it in there amongst them? Well, sometimes, yeah, I think this first move was a good move. He faked the shot, he pulled it onto his left foot, but then he should have hit it with his left foot. He didn't, he faked the shot again, pulled it onto his right foot. By that time, there were too many people around there. Dallas comes out, Yuremovich and Evans on the defense. Vanderbeck, Nanchoff, and McLeod. This is a sort of a patchwork quilt side for Dallas right now. It's much more of a defensive side than an offensive side, probably caused by the fact that the two huge scorers Sungle and Sagoda are out with their best scorer so far this season, Perez. Inch off deep corner, Kevin Crow knocks him down. And no. Oh, silly foul. Very fortunate that Van der Beek didn't get a two-minute penalty against himself then because there was absolutely no attempt to play the ball. I mean, uh, every attempt to play Perez, which is what he did. This, oh, very much could have been, in fact, probably should, should have, have been. been. A two-minute penalty against Dallas. That's right. Score one for the home side. Dallas gets away with one there. That could have easily been a boarding or charging. Zungle a run by Sagota. Zungle looks no one open. That's the first foul of the period. Almost seven minutes in. Oh, this is a dangerous spot because from the place that the referee sets this kick, you can go either way here. You can run a man down the left boards, or you can play it over to the right wing, or you can play it up the middle. There are a lot of possibilities for a ball placed at this position. And Sunga will shoot. Bander back yeah. and play back. Boy, nicely played by Sagoda. Well, it's tough to outrun Sagoda. I would, I would venture to bet you put him out there on the field and run him from one end to the other. He'd be the fastest guy out there. Without Zungle played with Yurimovich, and Zungle cuts off the pass back. Lazy and a pass. lazy pass, yes indeed. And it will be taken by the Sockers. So that's the sort of mistake you can't afford against this team. You can't afford to give them the ball. 
Well, a mistake just like that by DeBrito in the Baltimore game with the score 3-3 resulted in the winning goal. That's right. And those are mistakes, Michael, though, made by a team that's not been together long. That to the Vanderbeck, takes him on, avoids the trip in front. It's just loose and tote has it. There we go. Look out that pass to Zongo against Ruvanovic, who wins the ball. Odd here in that Dallas has now switched to Ruvanovic. Rav I'm going to say this. Yuremovich to Zungel with Lawson on the floor. Dangerous situation here. Lawson trying to clear the ball and nearly scores. Hit a thunderous shot, trying to clear the ball. 7.05 remaining second quarter. If that had been on target, that might have surprised Toth because he certainly wasn't expecting a shot from there. Segura with a header right in front, but absolutely nobody's home. And Sobieski, who after some Striking saves early that kept Dallas in the game. Has settled out and played beautifully in goal. See the good pressure again by Quinn there on Lawson, forced him to get the ball up. The sidekicks are having difficulty all of a sudden holding on to the ball when they get it. This is Brango Segoda. In front, Quinn turns, it's in. Oh my. Quick goal out of nothing. Oh, my, in what didn't look like any kind of an opportunity compared to the one Quinn didn't shoot on a moment ago. Look at Quinn just turn on this ball, Mike. Boom, gone. Yeah, very good quick turn and a shot all in one motion. Got his body over the ball, kept the shot low. Absolutely superb goal by Brian Quinn. Stretches the lead back out to 4-2 to San Diego with 6.26 remaining in the second period. Here's our HSE schedule of college football games this weekend. We've got for you Saturday night, 10.30, Texas A&M versus TCU. That same day, tape delayed action. A&M goes into that game with a chance still to be in the Cotton Bowl. And Sunday at 6 o'clock, UCLA needs this one for a Rose Bowl berth against traditional rival USC. Bowl invitations go out tomorrow night. Be with us for two important games for the postseason of college football this weekend here on HSE. I guess that means the Aggies are rooting for Texas this weekend, huh? What a weird situation. It certainly is. The assist to Sagoda, who now has a goal. I'm telling you, Sagoda and Sungo are always on the board. Last year, these teams played four games. In all four games, both Sungo and Sagoda scored at least one goal. That line produced 15 goals. That's outrageous in four games. Well, the whole sidekick team in four games only got 18 goals. That's right. And Zungle and Zagoda alone got, thir uh, got 15. Down goes Wes McLeod. Yes, he's on his keister. He was hooked. Evans locked hard by LaDuciere. And Evans kicks LaDuciere. That was one of Gino's better calls. Let's have a look at it again. No. no he's, got, he's got all ball, really. He's got all he? ball. And even if you contact the ball and then happen to foul the player, if you're playing the ball and hit the ball first, it is no foul on the follow-through. That's right. That one knocked around. Look out of these ping-pong matches. Um, sometimes opportunities arise. Yeah, it's a bit scrappy there. It's immediate pressure there on Moreland. You lose the ball again straight away. There's that rule. The ball played back from the center zone, back to the goalie. The goalie must play only with his feet. Moreland takes back. We'll try to play to, no, cut off by Coker. Can't play to Sobieski. Now he can play to Sobieski. Coker turned around and said, where's the help? Well, he wanted to call that from the official because Sobieski picked it up, but it was a legal play because uh, Moreland did not carry the ball back past his own red line before he gave it to Sobieski. That's right. And as the teams change on the fly, here comes Oops. Sagoda one on one here on the bench. Well. Yes, sir. Turns, he's got an opportunity right here. Give it a single. Block into the fence. Two against two quickly. Big opportunity. Scores Nanchoff and Kasky on a run. Nanchoff's got a shot. It's off the post. Did everything right except hit the target. Did everything right except hit the target. 
Be the defender, had the goalie dead to rights, hit it off the post. The goalie shot off the post again, Sundle shot blocked by Yeremovic. My, my, end to end, great opportunities, both teams just missing. Perez with the ball to Zongle. Zungle's been about as quiet in the first half as you'll ever see Steve Zungle be. Well, Steve Zungle knows it's a long season. It's a 48-game season. I mean, they're, they're practically a given to be in the playoffs. Uh-oh. Zungle says that should be two minutes. Well, I, I think the referee there reached in his pocket for the, for the card, for the two-minute card, and then thought better of it. And I think that's what Zungle was upset about. Michael, you be the referee. Well, he gets all player and he kicks right through the player, gets the ball. I would think it was a foul. I didn't think it was a vicious attempt. Ooh, down goes Crow. It did not look like a vicious attempt to hurt the player, though. No. But it, it was a very strong challenge, and Kasky is a tough player, like his countryman Norland. You know, I guess you're born in Northern Ireland, you learn to be tougher. Huh? Yeah. yeah. That's where they're both from. And you don't play after dark, either. <laughs> <laughs> At halftime tonight, we'll talk to San Diego head coach Ron Newman, a familiar face around these parts. Newman, who worked as the head coach for the Dallas Tornado for many years, and one of the main reasons soccer is so popular with kids in this area. Then, a feature on using the boards, sports news and highlights. That's at halftime, in just a few moments on HSE. As a matter of fact, in 3.45, as Vanderbeck heads for the board to follow his call, and whoa, they call this one on Dallas. That's five against Dallas, is it? Yes, yes five it against is. Dallas, 3.42 to play. This could be dangerous. Well, it's time for our... our uh, Line every evening with somebody has five, Mike. When it's five, take a dive. That's right. Look for San Diego to magnify every time they're bumped in the next three minutes or so. Lawson fans on the shot. That was a great pass to Lawson, but he did fan on it. Now here, dangerous at this end. Here comes oh, look that at pass. Zungle out of the blue, out of the bench area. This is Chacha Nandar, number six. Chacha is a mechanical engineering graduate of Texas Tech. Played four years at Tech. I doubt if there are many Chacha Namdars in Lubbock. What do you think? He's probably the only one. Good player, though. Zungle distributes, leaves it for Namdar, and it's raked clean by Moreland. Terrific play. Good competitive soccer game here. It's a good tie game. It's only picked up the pace the last few minutes, and he's getting physical also. Castro leaving it for Vanderbeck. Dallas would love a goal to get back within one before halftime. I think it's important that Dallas tries to get that goal. Ooh. Oh, Quinn got half a forehead on that pass. There's Lawson, wind up and fire, it's high. Headed around, it's loose, Vanderbeck can't control, and it comes back to Moore. has had tattoo all night. He's got a man. But I think that's a matchup really this favors the psychics because I think tattoo can beat Collier. Collier's not been in that much because I think he, he might have been slightly injured or something. This is only his second or third shift since the game began. San Diego really would be advised, I would think, to go forward on this attack because they could get a foul situation. Nice pass, Zungle. Back to La Ducier, who simply... If he were playing with his hands, I'd have said fumbles it. What do you call it? Football? Well, he did about the same thing. Just control of the ball. Cloud and Spencer come together. And the foul's on San Diego. One twenty left. First half, Moreland all alone wing. It's blocked in the defense by Clavijo. Still, it was a, you know, a shot from a long way away. No, it's a good tackle. It's a, it's a very hard tackle, but it's a good tackle. I mean, he's gone right through ball, zongo, everything. But that's the sort of player Moreland is. Down 
can't get a goal on the replay. It's a very strong challenge. Watch this challenge here by Morland. Boom. You know, boom. He got the ball. He's, he's not a bashful player at all. Michael, he did make contact with the ball first and was playing only the ball. Yeah, very, very strong challenge. And we'll watch it. If he gets the ball, boom. And then it's a collision between him and Zungle. Holy cow, I'm telling you. San Diego's fortunate Zungel didn't get hurt. He was hit full force on the leg. Well, Zungel's a very tough individual. I mean, he's, he's had his share of uh, bashes over his career. And he's well, quite a solid player. But Moreland, like I said earlier, he, he is definitely one of the toughest players in this league. Well, when you're a marked man, literally, as Zungel is every night, I mean, people do everything but get, it, get after him with tire iron. Well, that's right. The, the fact is, Moreland would not have been unhappy to see Zungel uh, taken off with a slight injury there. Yeah, you'd never say that publicly, but... Certainly. I mean, he saw his chance, you know, to go for a free ball and get a bit of zungle as well, and that's what he did. Unfortunately, the referee saw it as a foul. There's the power play. 105 left in the first half. Dallas has their power-killing unit on. That's Gabara challenging Zungle. That's Radwanski. Ball in front to Dana. Back to Dana. Dana looks. There's Zungle in front. No, no to Perez. Dallas doing a good job maintaining position right here. There's Zungle. Stop it. Wind up. Give it on the wing. The shot size are going to roll in front. It's knocked out of there by Evans. And this ball is cleared nicely. Yeah, reorganizes a bit. Zungle starts it to Dana. There's Zungle. He'll run on this one and fires at Evans. Blocks it. Evans blocks it again. The header down goes someone. Well, I can't agree with that call either again. I don't know what it is. Well, he's called jumping in on Zungle here. But he's, again, it's a fair challenge for a free ball. Look, fair challenge for a free ball. It is a free ball. And it's a fair challenge, in my opinion. And in fact, Zungle got the ball because they'll still have 48 seconds remaining in the penalty when we start the third period. San Diego will start the third period with a man advantage for the first 48 seconds, and they will take a 4-2 lead to halftime. Your impressions of the first half? Well, a very good game. Sykes got off to a sluggish start. It's a very physical game, certainly picked up in the last few minutes. You know, the referee is leaving a, something to be desired, which is unfortunate because generally Gino is one of the better referees in the league. Uh, he's not letting them get, a, get away with a lot. It doesn't seem like High level of play, though. Very high level of play, and San Diego's a good team. Psychics have done a lot better, though, the last uh, 20 minutes than they did in the first 10 minutes. Just a judgment on your part. If this were the team Dallas were putting on this field last year at this time, what would the score be now? Well, San Diego would probably have at least eight goals, I think, last, you know, last year. The Psychics have defended better, although I will say this. The first 10 minutes of the game, the Psychics look like the Psychics of last year. But for the last 20 minutes, they played competitive. That's right, they look like the sidekicks of this year. Mm -hmm. That's the first half of action. The Soccers lead it by two goals. Give us a minute to sell some things if you would, and then back on the other side of it, we'll spend a few minutes with the Soccers' highly successful coach, Ron Newman. <laughs> This certainly seems like old times for me. Standing next to me, the winningest coach in the history of soccer in North America, Ron Newman. He's won four straight championships the last four years indoors. He won a championship as coach of the Dallas Tornado Outdoors in 71, won a championship in the American Soccer League, was for seven years the coach of the Dallas Tornado. It's nice to have you back in Dallas. That must pull some heartstrings for you to come back here. I always love coming back to Dallas. Sometimes disappointed that the, the fans aren't bursting to come into this place because uh, so many of our ex-players, you know, like Mark Renshaw, Dickel, Bobby Moffat, Kenny Cooper, John Best, go through more. Uh, left such a legacy amongst the children here, you know, and uh, just so much hard work back in those early days, and uh, and yet I don't see it showing up yet in these stadiums with the with the indoor. One of the people who did a lot of hard work was Ron Newman. I remember still those early years, you and Olive going up and down Central Expressway, putting the stakes with the Tornado Game Tonight signs out there. You come back here and you still don't see it happening, Ron. Does it sort of make you feel bad for the years you spent here? 
power, but it certainly makes you see what's needed. You know, and the media has to put the game in the right perspective for the fans. It has to give it importance. I moved on to Fort Lauderdale, as you know, and I moved on to San Diego, where the game is treated with a great deal of respect. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're always on the front page, with, you know, the, the day of a game and the day after the game, and, and somehow it's treated with importance, and so the fans realise the games are important, and they're going to come out and see it. And I think, you know, maybe I'm knocking the media here in, in, in Dallas, uh, but I, I can escape tomorrow, so I'll, I'm safe. But they, um, you know, they really ought to realise that it's those are the people that, that decide whether the soccer fans can become um, uh, real fans by seeing the importance of the game and the, and then the sidekicks are, are improving every game. And then it's a, it's a great game to come and watch. The indoor game is a marvellous, marvellous American sport. You have now reached a place for a coach where it's either a blessing or a curse. I'm not sure which, and I wonder if you're sure which. You're expected to win this thing every year with the record you put on the board. Yeah, that, that takes a little bit of a um, spark away from winning because, you know, it's a bit of a drudge. You, you do get uh, knocked back if, if you lose a game and everybody wants to beat you. And that's the, the focus point of this season sometimes, just to beat us. And, uh, but, you know, you're going to strive for championship and, and it's lovely to win championships. And if you, if you do, then you've got to expect that sort of thing. So we're just going to take it. With Collier healthy again this year with Coker nearing good health again this year, with V back after a year away from your team and still some tremendous players on your club, might this be the best indoor soccer team ever assembled? Well, I think every year we have to be a better, bit better than last year. We've not really made many changes from last year, so any changes we've done, we've, we think we've done for the better. So I've got to say that we're a little bit better than last year, but everybody in this league is that much better. But a lot of teams, I think, are maybe 20 or 30% better. Uh, we've managed to maybe get two or three percent better. It's very difficult to know how to get better when you've when you broke every record there was to break last year. Mm -hmm. Ron, in case you're hurting for talent, I know where you can still get a player. Mike Renshaw, as the analyst in the game tonight, says his knee is fine. He could give you 20 minutes. Let me tell you that 20 minutes for Mike Renshaw, just before that knee collapse, he was one of the finest players in North America. It broke my heart to see his knee break down. I'm saying that sincerely because he was showing incredible form and. It was a disaster for the game to see to Mike go, but now we can talk to all the fans. And that's worse. <laughs> He's starting to show some form as an analyst too, Ron. Yeah, well, I know. He knows the game, does Mike, and he loves the game, and that's very important. Congratulations on an utterly spectacular career. Continued success. Thank you very much, Norm. That's San Diego Soccer's coach, Ron Newman. Our halftime continues with a soccer feature after these messages. And the soccer's up 4-2 at halftime. Here's the sports news of the day. In football, Washington's injured quarterback Joe Theismann held a press conference today in Washington, D.C. He says he will try a comeback for the 1986 season, says that reports he'll retire are completely false. Injured Philadelphia Eagle quarterback Ron Jaworski, whose bruised shoulder put him on the doubtful list for the Cowboy game earlier this week, has been upgraded to questionable and may be upgraded to probable by tomorrow. Texas Tech football players upset about the firing of coach Jerry Moore say they considered boycotting tomorrow's game against the University of Houston, but they will play now, they decided, late this afternoon. NBA basketball this evening. Two minutes to go. The Pistons are drowning Golden State, 109-93. Fourth quarter, Boston 89-87 over Philadelphia. Third quarter, the Cleveland Cavaliers lead Utah 65-62. Third quarter, the Knicks over Washington, 61-59. The Knicks playing without Patrick Ewing tonight. And in San Antonio, tomorrow night's Dallas Maverick opponent, the Indiana Pacers, are getting nailed by the Spurs, 45-33 second period. Two games later, including the Houston-Seattle game in Seattle. In baseball, Doug Rader, the fired manager of the Texas Rangers, apparently will get the third base coaching job with the Chicago White Sox. And the St. Louis Cardinals today turned down an offer from the Chicago White Sox to trade Britt Burns to the Cardinals for Joaquin Anuhar and Ricky Horton, two pitchers. The Cardinals say they're worried about Britt Burns' hip problems, which he's had since birth. Here with the statistics of the first half of this soccer sidekicks game, Mike Renshaw. At halftime, half here we are. The score is 4-2 San Diego. Shots on goal, San Diego 16 to Dallas is 14. Power play goals. No, uh, no power play goals either team. Block shot, six for San Diego, seven for the sidekicks. Goalkeeper saves, six for San Diego, five for Dallas. It is a very even game, as the, uh, the stats would indicate. Early in the game, San, uh, San Diego got up to a very fast start, scored at 3.36, goal by Segura, made it 2-0 at 9.32 on a goal by Hugo Perez. 
won 3 0 at 9.55 by a goal by Oda Koka. Dallas got back in the game on a, a good rebound shot. Goal by Billy Caskey at 13.42, the end of the first period. They trailed three goals to one. Open the second period, Tattoo with a very good individual effort at 4.38, made it 3 2. Here's the goal by Tattoo. Good control there. Rides the tackle there very, very well. Rides a second tackle. Rides an attempted trip by the goalkeeper. Turns left foot from a bad angle into the net. That made the score 3 to 2. Psychics had the game going their way for a little while there, but unfortunately for them, Brian Quinn at 8.34 scored the San Diego's fourth goal, make the score at half time, San Diego for the sidekicks too. I don't want to date you, Michael. I don't want to date you, but you played against some of the people on the field tonight. Didn't you play against Ada Coca? Played against Ada Coca, certainly did, yes. <laughs> Good job, Julie V's not out there. I played against Julie several times. That either means he's getting older or you were very young when you played against them. I, I was fairly young. And still on, I might add. Here is Quinn's. This is a marvelous one-hit shot. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's a turn to 360 degrees and a shot into the back of the net. One thing that we must, must underscore again about the quality of the San Diego team. Brian Quinn's a good player, but he is definitely the second line on this club. They are not here with two All-Stars tonight. Gene Wilrich has suspended a game for a grievous foul in the Cleveland game. And star player Julie V is not here tonight. He has a muscle pull. The key to this club, Michael, is that all the way down the roster, there are good players. That's right, and there is not the pressure on a player like Quinn to score, you know, because he's got Zungle and Segoda with him. It makes it a lot easier for a player like that to come through and score occasionally and uh, he certainly does a good job of that. It's a lot more difficult for a player like Tattoo, who really has the weight of the, of the offense on his own shoulders. Our director, Dave Burchett, would like to get this personal message in. He wants Matt and Scott to know it's 9 o'clock and it's time to go to bed. He would also like his wife, Joni, to know that this was not some kind of flimsy excuse. He is working tonight at Reunion. I hope our producer, Bob Steinfeld, has got this on tape so that Dave will slip us the 10 bucks he promised us for that announcement. Again, to start the third period, Dallas trails San Diego 4-2, and for the first 48 seconds of this third period, Dallas will be a man short. Their penalty killing unit is on. That is Jim Gabata, who played American Indoor Soccer Association Ball at, Association Ball at Louisville. Last year's number 15. Radwanski is the toehead, the blonde-haired youngster, who was their number one draft choice. And the defenders back there are Evans, and Kevin Smith. And Kevin Smudger Smith is on the floor. This could be a very important 35 seconds here for the sidekicks. You don't want to go back down three goals. So you were down once three goals, and digging yourself out of graves that big is seldom done against clubs of this quality. Ooh, Peter Coker tried to touch that ball through the defense. Look at Zungle with the crowd. This will be San Diego's last thrust with the man advantage. Left wing Perez plays the boards, blocked in there nicely in the defense. And Polly has it, but Dallas penalty killer. And coming out of the box there, he's open, give it him. Radwanski didn't see Moran. Moran came out of the penalty box, would have been one on nobody. Well, you have to forgive Radwanski because that is a raw defeat. And plus, he had not much indoor soccer at all. He was an outdoor All-American at North Carolina. And there he goes, leaping off and over the bench. Did you see that move? That's right. He's going to get an air for there from Moreland right now. Uremovic on the wing. Stumbles a bit. Elbow, elbow, elbow. Boy, it gets tough along the boards. Dean out back to toe. This is Brian Quinn, score of the fourth goal. This is Gary Codger. And that is Dana. Flips, but down goes Watson, down goes Zungle, foul on Zungle. What a good match this has been this evening. As you see Zungle trying to come through Lawson, the reason Coach Gordon Jago picked Lawson to cover Zungle tonight was back when Zungle was starring with the Arrows, Doc Lawson was starring in defense for Philadelphia and did a very sound game-after-game -game job against Zungle. 
second foul there of the period against San Diego, a foul on Tattoo. left in the period, that's the third foul against San Diego. If you're on the Dallas side emotionally, that's a good sign. Dallas desperately needs the next goal in this game. Wouldn't you think the next goal in this game seals it for San Diego if they get it? It's only tough for the Psychics to come back from three goals down late in the game. Tattoo works away, it's in front, the pass is high. And that's what it was, he's trying to pass it over and it was a little high. Look at the play by Quinn. Kicks it back over the head to himself in a foul. Call. Alan Vanderbeck thinks Quinn. It does look like San Diego is determined to keep Collier on Tattoo, and I really feel that if the Psychics can isolate Tattoo against Collier, uh, that's going to be a mismatch. I believe so Tattoo has the measure of Collier. We shall look for Dallas attempts to get Tattoo free one-on-one -on -one with Collier. This is Chacha Nanda, whose full name is, in reality, Ashgar. Shaheen Nanda. We'll call him Chacha. Nicknamed Chacha while he was a waiter in Chicago. This is Castro who's getting a lot more playing time this evening than he has in the first few games of the season. That's right. I wonder if his nickname is Fidel. No, I, I doubt it. Lawson has played very well tonight. Again. And the right wing is open with Cordejo, but they didn't see him. And it's open again, and they don't see him. Well played by Coker to ride Lawson off the goal. Chance here for Dallas. Tattoo's got two on with McLeod. Two-minute penalty, yes, sir. No doubt about that. And, you know, Quinn probably felt like he had to take him down because Tattoo will score in that situation. Here's a change in Tattoo, Mike. He, he's not as much begging for a foul this year or getting up feeling like he's been, he's much more of a professional realizing much more he is the target man for the defense and that he's gonna get a lot of bumps. That's right, he was holding that injured wrist again. It looks like he fell on it quite heavily. That is a sprained wrist. And actually, you add his first goal this evening, and it's up to six goals and four assists for Tattoo this year. Oh, here's a dangerous play, and it's blocked by Toth. It's free in front, no Toth has it. Well, in the situation where Tattoo drew the foul, though, he knew Quinn was coming from that side, and he and, you know, put his body between uh, Quinn and the ball, so that the only way Quinn could get the ball was to foul him, which is what he did. realizing this is a critical portion of the game. Manchoff goes left foot, hits the glass. Ooh, Manchoff hooked Clavijo and no call from the official. Well, again, he was trying to use his body to shield the ball from Clavijo. There you go, that's the idea. Ooh, just wide. There's a chance for Manchoff. There's a man in front. No, they seal it off. She San Diego played that well. They did, but the chance came when Vanderbeck played a one-touch pass over to Marlin, which is what you've got to do in this game. Move the ball around one touch. There's Manchoff and Toth! There's the reflection and kicked out of That's, there by Schmetzer. It's got to be dangerous play. That's a, if they don't call that dangerous play, I mean, if you don't... You can't get any closer to kicking a player in the head. You cannot do this. And they let them get away with it. Watch. Ball there, up in the air. Oh, that's definitely a dangerous play. I, I'm absolutely aghast that the referees have not called that. Manchoff goes to the left foot, and Crow, my goodness, he blocks more things than Chicago Bears front line. You see, you're not allowed to lift your foot up that high, you know, above the player's head height, literally. Dangerous play here as Namdar pressures, pressures, and look at all the time Chacha Namdar all by himself is forcing Dallas to use up there. Again intercepted, here it comes to Nanchoff, chance here, no, no, there's Clavillo. Now, 
There's too many men on the floor for San Diego. Yeah. Sungle had come on. Nolan told the referee about it, and the referee just blew him up, blew him off. Didn't even want to know about it. You know, so much depends on the officiating. Like when on the high kicking call there, have they call that? Uh, you know, maybe they have to send somebody else in for two minutes, and they didn't want to do that, so they just ignore it. Like they're going to rewrite the rule book or something. That was definitely an extra man on the field. Both people were on the field in position to play the ball at the same time. One of them should have been off near the bench area. Now, they just ran four seconds off the clock. Still running. They haven't even started to play yet. Now, that's six seconds they've run off the clock. Since And, and the play has not been started yet. They've got it. They should put the time back on the clock here, and they're not going to do it. I can't can, believe it. Can Brian Quinn hear us? Five seconds. Five seconds. No, Brian. Brian it's 11 seconds, Brian. 11 Brian, seconds. If you can hear us, wave. <laughs> Is Brian Quinn listening to us? <laughs> he wants... <laughs> Does he want a job <laughs> as an announcer? <laughs> what's, he, what's he trying to do? Roving reporter on this telecast? Sideline? He's certainly enjoying himself in that penalty box. Quinn, Fine, are you enjoying yourself down there? Yes, how are you doing? We're doing very well up here. <laughs> what are your views of the game, Brian, so far? How do you think it's going? I want to go here because it's only five seconds. Go back. He's coming here. Unbelievable. <laughs> only at Reunion Arena at a sidekick game. Eh? Live interviews with a guy in the sun bin. <laughs> Dangerous here. Yes, it is. Schmetzer on the run. He's got La Ducier. Look out here. He'll play the ball off the boards on a touch. He goes right around the defender. No, no. Nice play. Nice play in the defense by DeBrito. Well done, well done Dallas. Well done. Tattoo. San Diego racing to get back. He quite make his way through four players then. Penalty's over. Nine minutes to go. Third period. The score remains unchanged from halftime. 4-2 San Diego. You're watching live Friday night soccer from Reunion Arena. The San Diego Soccer's the defending MISL champion with Brian Quinn, who has gone back to his regular job. And a little pressure, and Lawson does not quite steal it. Clavijo gets it. They can't pass back. Oh, dangerous play. But Dallas is showing a great deal of energy defensively. Yeah, it's a, it's a great game right now. It's end to end. Castro right through and it slips to the foot of toe. So you are just going to touch on that and knock it away from Tattoo. Michael, as an experienced player and coach, don't you need to score soon off a rush of energy like this? Not really. I think for the sidekicks, the most important thing is not to let San Diego score. I think they'll get their chances to score. They've still got to be in the game when those chances come. Here is Tattoo against Clavillo. He goes it's to the foul. Right. It's a foul. It's a foul. Yeah. So it's a foul. What's Clavillo arguing about? He doesn't think it's a foul? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Watch. All he gets is Tattoo. <laughs> Nowhere near the ball, and he argues about that one. Maybe we can get him on headset later. Yeah, we need to. That'd be great. We'll get him on as well. Down low, digging, digging, digging. Kasky, foul. Foul, Kasky. Four fouls against San Diego. Two against the Psychics. Approximately halfway through the period. Toast to Zumbo. Look out. This is dangerous. One on one with Uremovic. The shot bounces to Sobieski. And look at how quickly Sobieski comes out. All right, a goal from... Great play by Kasky. Good follow up by McLeod. That's a good run by Uremovic. Blocked and blocked. Beautifully done by Perez because Tattoo had turned to go left. If somebody needs to be on the right wing of this formation, there's no one on the right. They need to balance the floor. It's now again. gets knocked out. Oh, no! The referee put his whistle in his mouth and then... Oh, I don't know about this. Dangerous run here. The ball to Dana. One touch pass taken by Evans. I mean, if you take a guy down, it's a foul. And uh, he certainly took him down. These two teams are exhausted, changing on the fly here. You can tell there's going to be a lull for a few seconds here. Both teams have been going goal line to goal line, basically. 
Smith's in for a shift. He's giving somebody a break because he's not a regular. Vanderbeck turns it. What a save. That's a great save. That's a save of the night for me because the reactions there, the quickness of the goalkeeper there was absolutely tremendous. Because that was a winner all the way. That save and Sobieski's save in the first half were just terrific athletic moves. Dangerous here. Dangerous here in front. La Ducier gets batted out of there. Numba. Taken away by Vanderbilt. Take him on. One against one. Must try and go by him. And he does. Takes the shot. What throw is a good defender. Look at Crow work this ball. Now we're not talking about, we're not talking about an average player in Nanshoff. He's a terrific offensive player. He's and Crow player. marked him so well. That's right. Nanshoff made Crow work very hard, but uh, he was up to it. Lawson here, he's got a big green Turn, shoots. It's high. It's going to come down in front of the goal. The leap and the foul on the Dallas player. Now, they, that is a foul, you see, because if you look at Heath uh, while it can, you'll see that Nanshoff is not looking at the ball. He just jumps up to try and impede the goalkeeper's progress to the ball. Let's see what Michael was describing here. Watch Nanshoff. Well, he looks at the ball now, but now it looks like, watch him look at the goalkeeper. Right now, just goalkeeper. Right, no attempt to play the ball at all. Again, another opportunity for Dallas. Look at this pressure again by Quinn. He He's full of running. He's a little of everything tonight. Chance here. Ball through. Nicely played to Smith. Smith turns on the ball, looks for help. There's the run being made by Evans. He can't quite get a full foot on. It's in front. Toe blocks it. And Schmitzer virtually clears it. Evans shot. It's the glass above the net and goes up. What of action here. This is a really high level of play. Look at the play. So, now watch Schmetzer. Bobby's flying everywhere. Schmetzer pulls it. Blocked by Smith. Back out to Evans. Quick shot. Under pressure. Over the top. Wow. If you like indoor soccer, here's when you can see it again. Our next telecast will come your way live. Friday the 13th versus the Baltimore Blast. That's a team Dallas has never beaten. If you haven't seen Stan Stamenkovic play indoor soccer, then you owe it to yourself to come and see this guy. This guy is the original refrigerator of pro sports. This man is built somewhat like a rain barrel on wheels. He's putting it kindly. But he is a magician with the ball. He is absolutely phenomenal with a soccer ball, what he can do with that ball. You know what's strange is that he is every bit as unusual an athlete as a William Perry, as a Walter Payton, uh, as your great hitters or great pitchers in baseball. He is a rare, rare athlete. He is in his own right. And unfortunately, because of where we're at with indoor soccer, he doesn't get the sort of attention, media attention, mainly that he deserves. Because he's a great player. By any standard. Four forty-eight remaining. Third period. Score same as it was at halftime. Four-two San Diego. Zoltan Toth and Christoph Sobieski have been terrific in goal tonight. You know this game could be about 11-9 without the defenders and the goalies playing as well as they have. And a lot of chances at both ends. They certainly have. It's Wes McLeod, the run with Collier. Collier wins it, plays it back to Tote. Look at how quickly Tote gets the ball back in the offensive flow. Zagoda, oh, Evans put both hands down on the net to block the ball. Here is Danshaw. Let's see if he one touches it off the boards. He tries to turn. It's bounded loose and picked up in there. This is dangerous. This guy can move. And he's got and he'll take Evans on. Far left. Look yes, at the to run him. He's got an angle of the right. It's blocked beautifully. Great right effort by Evans. I'll tell you what, he lost about three inches of hide there on the turf. But he, he paid the price, but he had to. And here comes McLeod in an open floor. You know, 4-2 is a game where a lot of people say, gee, there wasn't much action. This has been extraordinary action for a score that's only 4-2. It certainly has end to end. Down, almost down goes Tattoo. Oh, it was a foul against Tattoo for leaning into Trevijo. Now that's four fouls apiece, 3.31 remaining in the period. 
Again to tattoo, though. Last year, he'd have protested all over this arena that the foul wasn't on him. Well, he's maturing as a pro. He's still a young man, remember? What, he's 21, 22 years old now? Fungal elbows Lawson. Oh, and then blocks a shot with his shoulder. And tattoo, one on two, takes the ball away. Goes right. around Crow, it's in front. Here comes the run by Uremovich, and it's blocked out of there by Toth. Toth is playing great, isn't he? Unbelievably well. Unbelievable. Look at this save. And watch the way Toth flies out to close the angle down here. Watch, he flies out towards the ball, gets as close to that ball as he can to narrow the size of the target. See, if he stays in the goal there, it gets in the back of the net. The closer you get to the shooter, the more of an obstacle your body becomes. It takes a lot of guts to do that because that ball can hit you in the face coming at 80 miles an hour just as soon as it you anywhere else. And quite frankly, there are places worse than the face. That's right. Lawson. Long ball to the corner for Tattoo. Two, two, two guys on him again. They're not going to give him any room. That's a foul. Well, Tattoo took a bit of a dive. Yeah, but he got hit as well from behind by Trevino. possession there'll be a timeout i don't believe that's an injury i think that's an exhaustion frustration it might be uh, we better hope it's not a turned ankle we can, they can all afford to lose this guy you see the sort of attention he gets see zungle's not a defender let's take a look here mike his foot just got caught in the turf and it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a bad injury But generally speaking, when Tattoo gets the ball, two defenders immediately throws him down. He's not going to give him any room at all. Because frankly, he is a player that can kill you if you give him room. He is the hope of this team. There is no question about that. A 59-year-old silver last year. Such a two tackle He didn't land on the bad wrist like that's a possibility. Okay. 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 He appears okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, my. Just had a relapse. It is, it is not apparently any kind of foot or leg injury. Oh, I'm just fatigued. It's been on a long time. Well, with 2.14 to go in the third quarter, and a three-minute... Oh, give him a rest. And a three-minute break between periods, you could get him... Cabrino simply carries him single-handedly. We're going out for a nice tea later. Let's take Pedro Cabrino with us. Did you carry the check? I, I don't know, Mike. I was kind of hoping that uh, you were looking at the back. Tattoo just looks exhausted, doesn't it? One more look. Yeah, let's see. There's the wrist. There's the, oh, he lands on the wrist and lands on it again. Oh, my. The Brito on the floor now counts. Fresh legs. The Brito is a very capable player. The Psychics haven't really got as much out of him so far this season, this young season, as they would have liked. Uh, if he's on, again, he can't pick up the slack. He's that type of player. He is a goal scorer, too. The Brito will put the ball in it. He's done it three times already this year. The pressure done by Quinn immediately. Nicely played by Coco, but nicely played by Ben. Oh, yeah. my goodness, Castro didn't know there was no one behind him. You know, again, that's an inexperienced young player's mental mistake. Although, also, you know, he needs to get a shout there from one of his teammates as the ball is coming into him that indeed he does have time to turn, take the ball himself. He might have thought he was marked. 
looks a bit disgusted with himself. There's tattoo in the background, ice on the neck, which would indicate it is a bit of uh, fatigue. He's been out there a long time and he works very hard. See, it didn't look like he hit his head on the turf, but you can't tell. He did take a tumble there. I think they're just reviving him is what it is. They better revive him quickly. This game has 16 minutes to go, and he is the number one scorer for the... Oh, that was Red Rocket ball winds up in the... Uh, uh, Trevillo trying to play it off the seat. glass to Quinn. And this judge just slightly went off the top of the glass and over. All these stoppages in play are an effect a slight advantage for Dallas at this point with its leading scorer sitting on the bench. The more time you have to revive Tattoo, the better off you are. That's right. That's the fifth foul out against San Diego now. Just inside a minute to play. Look at the pass by Tozo and Quinn couldn't quite control it. Both long ball. Almost created an opportunity. Here's the play. Nanchoff, good ball to Moreland in the corner. And Toth comes all the way out again. He has not made an angle or a play mistake this season. He hasn't. Nanchoff around to Toth. He cuts the ball off at the wood. This is a mismatch here. Yes, it is. Zungle and Evans. Zungle tries to go around Evans. Odd angle. Turns back to the left. He's in front to go to fans on it. Now the the other side. 16 seconds to go. Here comes Kasky. Kasky doesn't have the speed, I don't think. So go to nice pass in front by Kasky, though. Nice attempt. Seven seconds left in the period. Psychic should set this up now. This is our last chance. One more example of how important pure speed is in every game. Baseball, football, basketball, whatever it is. Zagoda was about a step and a half back of Kasky. And since Kasky isn't slow, it just that Zagoda is so fast that he caught up and got into defensive flow. That's right. Now, Kasky's a good player, a good solo player. He's really hurt this team. So he's lost in a drive, hits uh, Lagu Sewer into Derriere. High, 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 and a uh, whistle goes as the ball is in the air. The third quarter has been scoreless. It was 4-2 at halftime. It's 4-2 going to the fourth quarter. Stay with us. Also says something about the job that Doc Lawson has done on him so far this evening. Now, Lawson is doing his job. It's really up to the other players now to, to pick up the slack, put the ball in the net at the other end of the field. 15 minutes left in the game, and I think it's absolutely imperative that the sidekicks get the next goal. Tattoo has apparently left the Dallas bench area and has gone back to the dressing room, which is a an ominous note for Dallas, as you can see as we pan the bench area. The familiar face of number nine, Antonio Carlos Baccarati, is not there. That's right. Uh, you know, this, this might actually lift the sidekicks because now they know they're going to have to do it as a team. We will attempt to get the diagnosis of tattoo for you in just a moment. And we have the start of period number four. Dallas needing two goals to tie. Ooh. Crow and Vanderbeck collide.
That was a flip play by the sidekick. Lawson trying to play the ball off the board to a streaking Vanderbeck, who tried to play the car on and instead played a semi over player. Lawson has played a fine game, contests with Coker, and now it's free at midfield, and Dallas picks it up. Rico. That push on Caillou will set up a dangerous situation. Dallas with a chance offensively here. Yeremovich will take it. It is in front and knocked out of there by the defense of the Sockers. Long, long ball over the side. It'll be long to San Diego. Going to slip in just a couple of NBA scores. We've got a final for you. Boston has beaten Philadelphia 110-103. Cleveland leads Utah 110-109 in the fourth, and Detroit has beaten Golden State 115-96. Washington leads New York 92-90 in the fourth. A couple of other uh, indoor soccer scores up there on the board at halftime. Chicago leads Wichita 2-1. Minnesota leads Cleveland 1-0. And Pittsburgh gets St. Louis who scores early in the game. The report from the Dallas locker room, a slight concussion or tattoo and probably will not be back. Though the third quarter was scoreless, there was a major disparity in shots on goal. Dallas had nine and San Diego three. Another testament to how well Zoltan Toth is playing in goal. Yes, it's very, very good. The goalies that both end have played so well tonight. Sobieski has played well. You can't fault him on any of the goals. A bit of jousting there. That is in Smith. And Clavijo off the hole. Did Clavijo almost make a mistake with Debrito lurking in the penalty area? The psychics are really working hard to keep pressure on. This is going to be a collision here. In front, and Quinn simply can't Couldn't get a solid foot. The ball just came down. But look him race down the court now. He gets back there as well. Smith and Debrito playing the two-man game on the right side. Smith goes and hides beneath the official for a moment and then pops out again. Psychic's making their changes here. Slowing the game down while the fresh players come on. Trying to get fresh legs on. Turning on it, turning on it, turning on it. Lynch off very skillful being Mark well, though. Ball in the corner, driven in there, blocked with the boards. And McLeod wanted a handball on the defender for San Diego, no callback. So Rio is a good defender, he's quick, he did a great job there staying with Nanchoff. Nanchoff is a good one on one play. No back, San Diego just plays this ball poorly, and gives Kasky a chance for his pass to his interception. Cloud off the boards, chance here, it's in front, and the way from Kasky. Well played by Collier. Very well played by Collier. Well, these are two good teams. Rizzo, that's a foul. No, he took a dive over the backside of Moreland. I've got to disagree with that one. I think Moreland took his leg out of the switches. He made a meal of it, but uh, I think it's still a foul. <laughs> uh -huh. All alone, right wing crow, one on one, off the boards, and then high on the rebound by Zungle. You won't see Crow and Zungle miss opportunities like that often. That's right, could be a break for the sidekicks. Look at this! Sobieski has to go up at his goal now to pull that down. The danger there is if you don't handle that perfectly, Perez is waiting like a vulture to feast on your mistake. This is certainly a physical game here tonight. I'll tell you this, Norm. San Diego knows they've been in the game tonight. Michael, if, if the sidekicks play this well for 48 games... They'll be in the playoffs. I, I mean, I firmly believe that. I yeah. think of this sort of effort. I would venture to say they're, they're a 500 team or better. I think you're right. Well, this is a very competitive league this year. Very tough league. Zoltan Tote almost nailed Gordon Chico with the throwout. Yeah, Zoltan gives us his one hand grade of what he thought of that play. Yeah, I agree with you, Zoli, the goalie. Ball in front, take it away, and here they come the other way. Realize San Diego's playing this game with only 14 active players. So there are not a lot of fresh legs to put back out. Ooh, what lost. a collision there between Schmitz. What a collision. So they come at it again. Lawson and Dana this time. Lawson's got the beat. Dana the Dana for speed. Doesn't get a chance to use it. Tattoo has just returned to the Dallas bench area, but has taken a seat on the bench rather than up around the boards. 
I don't think you'll see Tete unless the sidekicks can get to 4-3. Juremovic with the pass and Smith blocked and it rolls behind Toad and his defense cleans up. Toad comes out a long way to block these shots, you know, he kind of leaves the goal open. If the sidekicks would make one more pass, get the ball in behind him, could be a chance for an empty netter. Back to Sobieski. Time trickles away from the sidekicks. 10, 30, remaining in the fourth quarter. And a back goal and he just simply misplays the ball. Sidekicks bring on Ledwanski. Trying to go to the fresh leg, Carey. McLeod pours it off the boards. For Vanderbeck, but knocked loose in the soccer's defense, cleans up again. Coker tries to run Evans, and that doesn't work. Soccer's are a little bit trapped there. They're slow in the change, and two men aren't back in their defense. Juremovic to Radwanski, lays it off the board, blocked by one of the defenders that did get back. Well, you've got off the motor to get back and catch this guy. It's a goal to left foot all alone. It's off the post. I'll tell you what, he picked his spot. He measured that shot with everything he had. Just misjudged it fractionally. And after the play, Quinn fouls the Dallas player Evans and Sagoda barely missed wide. Oh, oh, dangerous, dangerous back throw out. Sungle one on one leaves it for Sagoda. It's a cross bar. Sobieski got away with that one. That is just not the sort of mistake you can afford to make at this stage of the game. Here's an opportunity. The man all alone in front. Can he beat the goalie to it? No. Toth comes out the third. And it's right down the other end. A great pass by accident. Again, this is a mismatch the sidekicks don't want. Zunga blocked right nice. away by Sobieski. You see, you know, they can't have Evans on Zungle. Evans has, doesn't have the experience to play Zungle. Sagoda digging, digging, three sidekicks digging, down goes Sagoda, the ball loose to Collier. Ooh. And we have a foul going to be whistled against Sagoda, and it's going to send him off. Sure it is. And Zungle's very upset with Sagoda because he's showing unprofessionalism there. Morland has baited Zagoda and caused Zagoda to react and get himself sent off for two minutes. But he's in a 4-2 game, unprofessional. Right? Don't allow them to bait you. Put the headphones on him. If Dallas ever needed a break, Bronco Zagoda may have just given it to him, but again, here is that sensational penalty-killing team. It is Chacha Namdar, number six, number 21, Clavijo, number 12, Kevin Crow, and number two, Brian Schmetzer. All defenses, all defensive players. And this unit has been shorthanded, faced 17 situations this year, allowed only one goal. And the man Dallas usually has on in situations like this tattoo, sits on the bench with a slight concussion. and somebody upstairs put a foot up and deflected that ball. Kick saved by a young lady in section 120. This is a good job Debrito gets out of the way of this. Look, Debrito, get out of the way of that. Debrito nearly jumps the glass, and he's having to get away from that. Good job by Debrito, but time ticks away again. 8.45 remaining, 1.35 remaining in the penalty. If Dallas doesn't score in this man advantage situation, I would think it might so deflate them that the Sockers would be able to put this game away. Chance right here, the shot by Crow is wide. Because Dallas, go ahead, no, I'm sorry. Dallas trying to pick everybody up, and Crow got a breakaway. So San Diego does such a good job of keeping the ball when they're in a man down situation. That's part of the reason they're such a good defensive team. They keep the ball. Well, they go on the offense so much as what you're saying. That's right. If they've got it, you certainly can't score against them. There's Nolan and Vanderbeck. They play catch. I mean, the Psychics really have another really clean chance, and there's only 49 seconds left in the power play. San Diego plays a little bit of a different defense. Nolan tries to play through, and Nandar will now make a run at Vanderbeck. Now, see, this is time going off the penalty clock. Here comes Cavillo around Sobieski. Can he shoot on goal? Diving save should have been a handball by Sobieski. And Cavillo knew it and appealed for it. 29 seconds left. What a play by Chris Sobieski coming out of goal to dive and stop that. Might have been a handball for him to get outside the penalty area. No goal. Dallas back on the offensive. 18 seconds to go in the penalty, and it goes across in front. We'd like to say the sidekicks look a bit lost out there with their power play without tattoo. 
Oh, there's that play. There's the play. Zungle hopped off the bench in time to get the play. See, the player ran to the, to the near bench door, and Zungle came out at the far bench door. The pass wasn't quite there. There is Sagoda stepping back on the penalties. Over seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Dallas in what has been a scoreless second half. Still trails 4-2. Boy, but it certainly hasn't been void of excitement. between this game. Oh, there's a chance that Toth does it again. The only chance I was going to say, the only difference between this game and the 11-6 and 8-5 games of last year these teams played is the goal have been unbelievable. Another chance, Kansky, Redwanski makes the run. Oh, and it's blocked in the defense by Gesko, Kevin Crow again. Flick on by Kansky, taken out of there. Yes, he can. That ball's going to be played off the glass, off the top. It stays in play. Kasky runs. One on one. Down he goes. Foul should have been called. Yep, he would. Manchoff goes to the left foot against Perez. Can't turn him around. And now gets him around. And oh, hits the inside of the post and comes out. So didn't know where he was. He had no idea where that ball was. Unbelievable. Bad luck. Breakaway. Here's Dane. for an extra attacker if the score remains 4-2 for much more time. Digging, digging, down goes the Dallas player. Another foul on San Diego, I believe. The push is going to be on Collier again. Yes, yes it is. That's now four against San Diego. 5-0-6 to play. That could become a factor as this game progresses. And God, it's, oh, it just hit the leg. And, and it's not the not defense. defense. Smith couldn't get the shot off. Now he's looking to counterattack here. San Diego is on He's got La Ducier in front, and Moreland obstructs it. Could have been a two-minute penalty. See, you know, Moreland did the right thing. Can't let him get by you there. Got to stop him any way you can. That's what Moreland did. Watch it here. Moreland didn't even look at the ball. Plus, boom. Yeah, total obstruction. Thanks, Steve. Well, those two have had about a couple of nines on the Richter scale collisions tonight. They sure have. Neither one of them has backed down an inch either. That's a couple of hard rocks, Zungle and Moreland. No prisoners taken in that matchup tonight. Psychic's still not looking for the timeout. They're watching the clock go from the bench area. They now get the fresh legs on, and they'll often put the new goal, the, the replacement goalie, on with the fresh legs. Let's see what happens here. 420. Rolls to toe. What a good game this has been. Mike, that's a great pass. That's a great outlet pass by Toth. Poker and Lawson. Contest in the dock, and Lady still go at it, still go at it. Now, that's foul number five now, with 4.06 to play. Now, I would think the sidekicks now will, will not pull the goalie, and they will try and play for the sixth foul. But they look a bit disorganized here. Now they get the ball back. Now they don't. Now, as this is precious time. Now, Vanderbeck steals, and down he goes. He's trying to draw the foul. When he's five, take a dive. Referee wasn't buying it. And he did dive. This will be offside. Three line violation. Now there's the offside, it's the first one we've seen tonight, but a pass that goes completely over the two red lines. On the fly. On the fly, comes back to the first red line nearest right. the defense. That's right. And we've got a timeout here. Timeout. Now they're gonna pull the goalie. Take a chance here. The situation here is that the sidekicks will probably now pull goalkeeper Chris Sobieski in favor of a regular field player who must, of course, don a goalie's uniform because the rules state that one of the players must be a goalkeeper, but he actually will play out in the field like a field player. 
HSE brings you sports talk whenever we have a Houston Rocket game. Bill Worrell is your host from the Summit. When HSE brings you Maverick game, I'll be your host here from the Union. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock to start time, Jim Sundberg is our guest. Then Friday, November 29th, Drew Pearson. The 5th of December, Bobby Valentine. Don Carter and Gil Brand have each committed for dates in December. Sundberg, Pearson, Valentine, Grant Carter, the people you want to talk to are on Sports Talk before Mavericks or Rockets games. 3.49 to go. Dallas, I believe, has gone ahead and made the decision to take the goalie right now and go with the sixth attack. I would think so. I can't see over there who's got the goalie shirt on. Yes, Moreland is putting the goalkeeper's uniform on, and that's going to be it for Sobieski. Played a great game for the Cyclists. Could not certainly be faulted with the goals. Played a sensational game. Without Sobieski, it's 8 or 9 or 10 to 2. Without Toth, it may be 10 to 10. Some updates in the MISL. Chicago 5, Wichita 4 in the fourth period. Minnesota 3, Cleveland 2 in the fourth. St. Louis 2, Pittsburgh 1, also in the fourth period. That, if it stands up, would be Chicago's first win. That, if it stands up, would keep Minnesota in first place. And St. Louis in the West with a chance to move up. And Pittsburgh is a team Dallas is trying to leap ball. In That's right. They're a good team as well. This is a very competitive league this year. There are no dog teams in this league this year. The person with the yellow shirt is not a crossing guard. That's Victor Moreland. He's the replacement goalie for Dallas. They will go with a sixth attacker. Problem here is if somebody breaks loose, it's in the twine. That's right. Here's the chance. Let's see what happens. Trying to play it off the board to himself. Can't do it. And here's where that sixth attacker comes in. Moreland now starts up with the ball himself. Yeah, you take a chance here. It gives you a chance to get back in it, move the ball around, work for a good chance. But obviously, if the net is vacant at the other end, they can put you away with one good chance at the other end. There it is. In front. It is stopped by the defender in front. Needed a first-time shot by Kasky, and he tried to two-time it. Flavijo has Zumble all alone on Moreland. Lines up. It it's is a post glass. Let's see. It's Segoda goes to Zumble. They've got Moreland in goal. Now they can afford to pull it back. The run with Crow. Crow and Debrito. Oh, my. It's Debrito. Is the call. Exactly three minutes left in the game. Let's have a look. Ooh, Debrito is yes. really wasty. Looks like it was a good trip. So Zumble right. tries to play it, no. Victor Moreland. Moreland will come out himself with it. 2 50 remaining in the fourth quarter. Dallas down two goals. Moreland in the run, he switches wings to Vanderbilt. Marked by Quinn in the middle. The crowd plays back to Moreland. He tries it himself, and it goes through his run. Saved by Sobolski. Sorry, Toth took it right off McLeod's Here head. Here comes Quinn on a break. Quinn one on one. It's the post. It's a great oh, save. A play by Morland. Out to Songo. The danger's not over yet. It's wide. Unbelievable save by Victor Morland. Here they come. 2.15 to play. Still plenty of time if the cyclists can get the one goal they need. The wing Manchoff. He let it go, thinking somebody was there to pull the trigger, and Moreland unfortunately distributes the ball over the glass. Yep, don't need that. 2.03 remaining. You're watching indoor soccer from Reunion Arena. Mike Renshaw alongside. I'm Norm Hitzkus. December 13th versus the Blast is our next telecast. Watch this Moreland save. Just gets a piece of it with his foot. Knocks it onto the post. Now watch this. Gets back up. <laughs> Laying on the ground. Clears it away. Back to Zungalo. You can't fault the effort tonight. No, not at all. Either team. The thing that I think the psychics have to be pleased about is that at this stage of every game against San Diego last year, they were out of it. They, they, they weren't out of it, Mike. No, no. They had a foot on the plane. <laughs> they were buried. <laughs> yes, they buried were. And often. Do you remember one game out there where San Diego hit them with a five spot in the first period? That's right. Threatened to do it tonight, but the Psychics got their act together and have uh, really pulled San Diego off their feet well, since that point. Consider that last year, Zagoda and Zungle got 15 goals in four games. Right at four goals per game from that two -set. Tonight they have gotten one. That's right. Which just says what we saw at the top of the telecast, the fact that uh, the Psychics have improved tremendously defensively. 
Well, Lawson and Moreland had a lot of stability. Baramovich is a defender's defender, and young Mark Evans, the American, is really starting to play good indoor soccer, and Chris Sobieski has been brilliant. So but it certainly has, yeah. But all it means is 4-2 San Diego, that quick three spot. Looking down here, they're saying all the cameramen are behind the sidekick's goal. I guess they think this San Diego is going to score. Playing it to midfield. Here's the breakout. Yes, it is. Zagoda one-on-one. This is trouble. This is trouble. In front. Le Doucier. Look at the play by Norland in the goal. What a cutty effort. Dallas, it appears, will lose this game. But take nothing away from a gritty effort. Great effort. In the corner. Turning on it and coming back outside. We look for Smith and knocked over the boards by Ada Copa. Yeah, the, the, the psychics need to be hitting shots here as often as they can. Obviously, you, you can't shoot unless uh, you can't score unless you shoot. But they don't want to just give, uh, give up the ball easily. Dallas now has seven people on the floor. Oh, now Radwanski leaves. <laughs> wow, I thought this is a power play. I kind of stayed out there until the official ran me off. I had to get over there in the corner. That might have taken the official about two seconds to run you off. Though. Lines up, threads through, turning on the ball. It's loose right in front of It's not oh. seen by Kevin Smith. It's a goal, yes. Minute sent to play. And this place comes alive. Here it is on the replay. Ball and a good pass. And Smith lets it go pretty well as well. And just manages to get a toe on it as he's going down. A little slow in turning that ball. Look like he had the first shot at it, but Smith stood up and managed to slide and get a throw on it. I was beginning to wonder if the ball fit in the goal at that end. The way Coke has consistently kept it out of here. 109 remaining. Again, the match of San Diego has five fouls. So, one more foul against San Diego puts him in the power play. A sixth foul would give Dallas another man advantage. If the score is tied at the end of the game, then we will go to overtime. But uh, there's still a ways away from having this game tied. Zongo leaves it for Zagoda. Turns. Time takes away. 55 seconds. Foul call. That's foul number five against the sidekicks. Now, the next foul either way results in a power play. But more importantly, time is leaving the game right now. 55 seconds. Well, the sidekicks need to prevent them scoring here, but they need to get the ball. Zungo position. In front, yeah. and Schmetzer can't. Now, here we go. Here comes Dallas on the attack. 50 seconds to go. Moreland hurries to the wing to Nanchoff. He's got a straight run. He winds up. It's blocked well, in the defense. This is going to the other end. They're They're gonna shoot. Because there's the early shot. See, the goal to try, to try to shoot them when Moreland had his back to him, running back towards the goal. 33 seconds remaining. Moreland on the wing. Kevin Smith on the run. Play it off the board. It's blocked by Joe. He's blocked by Joe. When it was probably easy to score, kicked it right at toes. There's the goal. It's a goal again. It's a goal for the play. It's quite it's in. Well, you know, that was the game right there. Lunch off at the other end. You know, off balance. All right. But, you know, it was easy to score, it looked like, from here. Always easy to score up here. Uh, but he hit it right at toes. Toke made the save, made the quick outlet pass. Bang. Game's over. But what an effort. I'm exhausted. And I, I haven't been closer than 15 rows. What a play. What end-to-end -end action. My, oh my, oh my. Quinn finishes it off again. Uh, 18 seconds to play. But that uh, wow. effectively does it. Yes, it does. But the people, the 6,882 in the Union Arena, got more than their money's worth tonight. Well, they sure did. This game deserves more fans than it's getting out here. This is a good action game. This is not that old the network superstar. This is a great game in its own right. And it will make it in this country. That's it. 
the horn goes to defend the MISL champions. The San Diego Sockers have gotten a win, but they won't stop deep breathing for a long while. We're going to take a minute to catch our breath. We'll be back to summarize the San Diego 5-3 victory after these messages. Thank you.